we're asked to find the determinant of the given matrix using the cofactor expansion method. To find a determinant using the cofactor expansion method, we can select any row or any column, and we multiply each element in the row or column by the corresponding cofactor, and then we find the sum of all the products. So it is worthwhile to analyze the matrix and select the row or column that contains the most zeros, because that will reduce the amount of work to find the determinant. So analyzing the matrix, notice row four contains three zero entries, and therefore it'll be less work to use the cofactor expansion method along row four. We begin with the first element in row four, which is in row four, column one. So we begin with zero, and then because the element is in row four, column one, we multiply by negative one, raised to the power of four plus one. Next, we eliminate row four and column one from the matrix and multiply by the determinant of the remaining matrix. Notice how we have a three by three matrix where the first row is zero, zero, negative two, the second row is zero, five, negative five, the third row is one, four, zero. So we have the three by three determinant of this matrix shown here. So here we have a sub four comma one times the corresponding cofactor. And now we move along to the next element in row four. So we have plus, next element is zero, this element is in row four, column two, and therefore we multiply by negative one raised to the power of four plus two, and then we multiply by the determinant of the matrix formed by eliminating row four and column two. Notice how that gives us the three by three determinant shown here, where the first row is negative one, zero, negative two, the second row is one, five, negative five, and the third row is zero, four, zero. And we move on to the next element in row four, which is the element of negative five in row four, column three. So we have plus negative five times negative one raised to the power of four plus three. Again, four plus three is the exponent because the negative five is in row four, column three. And then we multiply by the determinant of the matrix formed by eliminating row four in column three, which gives us the three by three determinant shown here, where the first row is negative one, zero, negative two, the second row is one, zero, negative five, and the third row is zero, one, zero. Now we move on to the last element in row four, which is the element in row four, column four, which again is another zero. So you have plus zero times negative one raised to the power of four plus four. Again, the exponent is four plus four because the element is in row four, column four. Then we multiply by the determinant of the matrix formed by eliminating row four, column four, which leaves us with a three by three determinant shown here, where the first row is negative one, zero, zero, the second row is one, zero, five, and the third row is zero, one, four. Now the reason we selected row four is because three of these products contain a zero, reducing the amount of work that we have to do. This first product is zero, the second product is zero, and the fourth product is zero, which gives us zero plus zero, plus negative five times negative one raised to the power of four plus three times the three by three determinant plus zero. So of course we can drop the zeros. And since negative five times negative one raised to the power of seven is equal to positive five, we are left with positive five times the three by three determinant. So now we need to evaluate this three by three determinant. And again, we'll use the method of cofactor expansion because row three has two zeros we will perform cofactor expansion along row three. Now we need to be careful here. It's going to be five times the value of this determinant. So we have five and then an open parenthesis. And then the element in row three, column one is a zero. So that's why we have a zero here. Times negative one raised to the power of three plus one because the zero is in row three, column one. Next we eliminate row three, column one, which gives us a two by two determinant shown here where the first row is zero, negative two, and the second row is zero, negative five. Now we move along to the second element in row three, which is a one, which gives us plus one times negative one raised to the power of three plus two. The exponent is three plus two because the element of one is in row three, column two. Next, we eliminate the row and column of this element, or row three and column two, which gives us a two by two determinant where row one is negative one, negative two, 
The second row is one, negative five. We move along to the last element in row three, which is the zero in row three, column three. So we have plus zero times negative one, raised to the power of three plus three, and we eliminate the row and column of this element, or row three and column three, which gives us the remaining two by two determinant, where the first row is negative one, zero, and the second row is one, zero. So two of these three products will be zero. Notice how the first product has a factor of zero, so this will be zero, and the third product has a factor of zero, so this will be zero. This leaves us with five, and then times negative one to the fifth power is negative one, so one times negative one is negative one, and then we have the two by two determinant. To divide with the two by two determinant, we have the product of the main diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal, which gives us five minus negative two inside parentheses. And of course, five minus negative two is equivalent to five plus two or seven, which gives us five times negative one times seven, or five times negative seven, which is negative 35. So the value of the four by four determinant is negative 35. I hope you found this helpful.